Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And um, we have Tim Alexander. Tim, uh, the, the situation is fluid. Uh, it's remarkable to me the restraint that Mr. Putin is doing, considering the shelling of Slavyansk and uh, Donetsk. Uh, the nervy statements by Mr. Kerry to tell him to not disarm. In fact, <laughs> the European, the release of these latest observers from uh, literally these eastern areas of Ukraine, which are pro-Russian, separate, if you want to call it, uh, republics, I would call it, small re- micro-republics. Yeah, they're basically, they're basically, uh, basically saying, these observers, that the Europeans have given them a deadline until, I think, Monday, to smarten up and to stop arming the people and to come to the table with the uh, Poroshenko. Surrender in you know, hand. Surrendering in hand. On, it's like, on your knees. Come, and it's, it's uh, like, to the globalist like, Zionists that uh, the, the, yeah, these, these people, these people are nervy. That, yeah, that sla- have been slaughtering their uh, fellow citizens. Sure, I, that's, I, that's uh, probably not going to happen. Uh, pigs might sprout I, wings and fly to the moon, but don't I, don't bet the farm on it, you know? Right. My, my guess is what's going to happen is that Putin is going to finally be pushed by the people in these republics and the death toll. He's going to have to do something. The first step he needs to do is arm the heck out of the people in these pro-Russian areas. Secondly, he should cut off the supply lines. Russian special forces are well known to be some of the best in the world. They can cut off supply lines. And the third thing, he should use economic sanctions, which you can use through the BRICS nations, China, etc., to put to squeeze the heck out of them. They already have stated they're not going to deliver uh, gas, which means in the next few months, Ukraine is going to choke. And a lot of the gas they're trying to resell to Europeans, the Europeans are going to choke as well because the gas supplies are the main supply of energy to the main country that maintains Europe, which is Germany. Germany is dependent on Russian gas. And there's no substitute. North, uh, the North Sea gas is not there. There's no gas uh, delivery systems that we've set up with the abominator, the idiot in chief in the White House, including large gas delivering liquid natural gas LNG ships. Uh, we have a well, catastrophic situation. Well, there's not enough ships on the, uh, on the planet to, uh, to make up for the natural gas that would be cut off to East or Western Europe uh, if Russia totally closes the pipeline, which it appears she will. But look, the whole strategic picture right now, everything is inter- interlinked. The the coming total collapse of uh, the dollar and the world economic system, the uh, evolving general Middle Eastern war, the... Uh, and that includes the, the deaths of the three teenagers, which was tragic. The um, uh, the Ukrainian nightmare, uh, and also uh, the ongoing. It's on the back burner right now, but uh, in Asia, with the the various islands out there, uh, China, Japan, and so forth. Um, we are in a pre World War Three state, and we continue to move down the road. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that World War III is going to, is is about to explode. It certainly could. Uh, but the strategic direction of the globalist and the Zionist forces is is really clear as day. And they they've been pushing in the same direction uh, for quite some time now and then various things have sidetracked it or, or, or roadblocked it. But they intend to have a general Middle East war. Uh, Russia uh, prevented uh, a joint Israeli-American attack about a year and a half ago on Iran. Uh, not quite a year ago, uh, Russia sent a very large battle fleet uh, to the eastern Med off the shores of uh, Syria and Lebanon to prevent a NATO-Israeli attack on Syria. That's when they really began cranking up the the uh, so-called uh, uh, um, revolution, uh, which was all foreign mercenaries uh, in Syria, and the Syrians basically chewed them up and spit them out again. They were fighting for their own land, so right. now they 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 took this ISIS force which the United States runs out of the uh, U.S. Embassy in Turkey. Uh, the Saudis have been paying for a lot of it. We've been paying for a lot of it. The Qatari has been paying for a lot of it. But it's, there, there are CIA creation, this ISIS terrorist force, 
and they uh, did a surprise move and, and, and drove into uh, Iraq. Now, we delayed and delayed the delivery of 36 F-15s that the Iraqi government had paid for. So the Iraqi government had virtually no air power. They had a few helicopters. They had a couple uh, converted civilian Cessnas that could fire Hellfire missiles. By the way, the, all this nonsense, we're giving them 500 Hellfire missiles. There's only two uh, Cessnas that can, can fire them, and, they, and they're, they're very vulnerable. Uh, the, even the uh, Zhukov uh, Su-25s, which are a very good ground attack fighter, they're not wired for a Hellfire, but they're, they're wired for their own anti-tank uh, and anti-personnel missiles, which the, the Russians have shipped in. But right. uh, and it, all of this is interlinked, and the, the, they 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 want Putin to step into the quicksand of, of this Ukrainian war big time to bog down his forces uh, so that he can't do much in the Middle East. But uh, he has avoided that. He seized the strategic uh, naval base in the Crimea. He, 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 he managed to get that right away. But he has been very careful. He's trying, even though the, the mainstream media is mostly in the West, is mostly globalist, owned in Zionist ran, he's been very careful to try to present himself as a man of peace. Now, they keep upping uh, the, the ante, so to speak, and there will come a point when Putin will say, okay, I've had enough of this. Now, I think Putin's army uh, and air force can seize all the Ukraine in probably 72 hours with a little mop-up. But then the question becomes what happens with, with NATO forces and so forth. Would we be insane enough to try to really uh, take the Russians on? Right? But again, it's, it's keeping them tied down because the main thrust is this Israeli drive for a general Middle Eastern war. And you're seeing it on a couple of fronts. It's, it's the ISIS in Syria and, and, and uh, Iraq. It's pitting the Shiites versus the Shuni. But also these three teenage boys, one of whom had dual American-Israeli citizenship, and the other two were Israeli citizens. Uh, they you know the boys were that disappeared that they... Okay, now yeah. they found their bodies. Well... Uh, I always mispronounce the the Latin Chris Cro Bruno. Uh, who benefits? Who, and who, when there's okay, a terrible so crime, one on, of the things on. that police officers look for is who benefits from this? Who did it? Why? Exactly. You know? And and in 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 Netanyahu's case, uh, the Lakit the, the the War Hawks and Lakit Party. Uh, this was perfect for them because it, it allowed them to whip their people into a frenzy. It allowed them to get good uh, publicity, uh, PR around the world. The poor Jews are being uh, attacked by these crazy Muslims. And if you notice, we've had a couple weeks of real heavy propaganda about uh, the crazy Muslims. And I'm not saying a lot of Muslims aren't crazy, but um, Certainly, one of the photos uh, of the uh, that the ISI has supposedly machine gunned these guys laying down in a ditch. It, it clearly had been photoshopped. Uh, have they committed atrocities? Oh, I certainly think so. Uh, but but the point is, we are in a pre-war propaganda uh, situation right now. So they're they're trying to fire up the masses of people in America, Canada, uh, Eastern Europe, about all these terrible, deadly uh, uh, Muslims. And of course, just yesterday he came out with this map that uh, ISIS is going to take over southern, uh, uh, southeastern Europe, and they're going to take over this. That's a bunch of, that, I can't say what it is, but it's a bunch of, uh, uh, let's call it pooey. Uh, they, they're a small force. They're not going to take over uh, much more than what they've already taken over. This exactly. is an excuse to have a really horrible war. And, of course, even before they found the bodies, Israel bombed 35 different locations yesterday in, in, in Palestine and in the Gaza Strip. So yeah. they're about words, to get... They're, they're, uh, their on on who's gonna gonna be horrible. If you're going yeah, to the Israelis are looking for us. They're going to create a crisis, right? Seven and one. Welcome back to the Nutramedical. 
Medical Report. And Tim, uh, I think we're going to be joined here at the bottom of the hour with uh, Dr. Mike Kaufman. We're going to kind of mix it together. I, I want to talk about some of the issue, other issues. And uh, the first one is the uh, issue of what's going on, not only in Ukraine, where that's going to blow up, but the Mideast now where where Iran is, is shipping over 100 planes to Iraq to our uh, the leader that was installed by the American government, uh, Mr. Maliki, who happens to be Shiite. Uh, the uh, Shiites are actually the majority in Iran, Iraq, Iraq. And it turns out, it's very strange that they had an Iran-Iraq war, uh, because what we're having now is they're fighting over Tikrit, which is the original city or town, if you want to call it, from which Saddam Hussein came. Uh, Mosul fell, and of course there are a lot of Christians there that had to escape the area, otherwise the Muslims would have killed them as well. We have a disaster going on, and now, of course, our State Department and people like uh, Obama are supporting a new, quote, uh, government that is against the guy that we put in there, Mr. Maliki, who said he's not going yeah, to resign. Well, Saddam was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he wasn't, uh, he was a Sunni, not a Shiite. And we we encouraged him to uh, go to war Sunni. against Iran. Sunni. You mean and, Sunni? Uh, he was a Sunni, not a, not a Shunti. I mean, uh, he was Sunni, a, a various dialect of Sunni, which would be somewhat related to the Saudi Arabians who are actually pushing for more violence right. and more war there. Uh, I can't see how this isn't going to blow up and become a real catastrophic war, which will drive the price of oil and gas through the ceiling. And if we get embroiled well, in a that, war... That, by the way, alone will be, if we haven't already had the, the coming global collapse, uh, that will be the trigger. Well, I see a number of things that Gerald Salenti is talking about uh, on his reports every week, which he does in his video reports during the evening and his, his articles, which are amazing. I mean, his, his journal is far better than any of the public magazines. But here's what's going on. He says they shouldn't be teaching history in schools so unless they teach trends, if you want to call it, which is what we talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. Firstly, the trend of negative interest rate, which means now banks have to pay to actually deposit their money in Europe. Then we've got uh, the people trying to get easy money. The easy money isn't so easy anymore, which means that a lot of the people consolidating corporations and buying and, and getting giant assets and getting giant investments so the rich are getting richer that's starting to trickle down now, starting to not to work so well. Uh, the second thing is credit is contracting so that the actual economy has contracted, I think, a couple percentage points in the last quarter. Uh, well, which that's means the we're official heading... one. The, the, the real contraction in the first quarter of this year is somewhere between 10 and a half and 11 percent, which right. exceeds the worst contraction during the Great Depression. Right. So then that means the economy is contracting. The only jobs that have been made 90% plus are all mic jobs that are not subsistence wages, which means it's not enough for you to live in your own home or apartment. So you have to live with your mother or father or live in some kind of facility that's going to allow you to do Take it. Take the or, bus to work. Or do an underground economy. In other words, you get paid something to do another job on the side so you have more than one job. Uh, the situation is catastrophic to the middle class, and I, I, for the life of me, don't understand how the messages got somehow scrambled by the Obama administration to send people the message when they dumped 70,000 plus illegals on the streets that have actual known felonies, instead of deporting them out of the country when they basically don't qualify to become citizens, they sent the signal to tell people, come to America, the doors are open, we're not going to kick any of you out. Well, of course, yeah, along guards. the line of what, what <laughs> you just said, I am absolutely amazed and beyond disgusted that the political horrors that uh, are occupying the United States Senate and the United States House of Representatives and the various governor uh, mansions in this country, that they have been so silent about the kind of copia of, of death and destruction that is being waged internally and externally upon the United States and the American middle class. They are destroying our country. Uh, opening the gates to not just undocumented uh, toddlers, which is ridiculous, but and teenagers, but to all these gang members from Mexico and Guatemala. Yeah, you're talking about 16, 17, 18 year olds with tattoos, and you know they're violent gangs. Oh, yeah. It's just, look, it's treason. It's treason to sit 
back and, and be in a position of authority and do nothing. It, it's, it's the same as letting in an army uh, of irregulars, because in effect, that's what they are. And, and, and worse yet, we're taking these delightful individuals and we're, we're flying them and busing them all over the United States to spread them out so that when everything collapses, they can be right there to rob the banks to, uh, to cause maximum chaos. And where are our congressmen and where are our senators? You know, I mean, they're very keen about saying, okay, we need another so many billion dollars for Israel. How about for this country? And Obama wants another $500 million for moderate uh, uh, opposition uh, rebels in Syria. Well, one, there is no such thing. And uh, how about this country? How about all the people out of work? 80 to 100 million people out of work. Uh, where are our congressmen and senators? They're bought and paid for. But, you know, there's a point at which even a bought and paid for lying, thieving jerk ought to wake up and say, my God, you know, I'm not going to have a country to, that's worth living in. Uh, maybe I ought to not take so much money and, and say, okay, look, guys, I'm still an American here. I mean, maybe I'm a crook, but son of a bitch, uh, I'm still an American. Why don't we uh, stop this nonsense? We have an army. That army has lots of guns, lots of bullets. Why isn't that army on our border, stopping it. You know, I mean, the 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 solution to a lot of this is not rocket science. It's simple. But you have to have the people in power willing to do it, and the people, in, and if the administration won't do it, you have a Congress that does, that that has power and authority to act on its own. Well, well, it's sending double messages. When we have people like Nancy Pelosi, and again, uh-huh. the woman's head, you know, I believe that plastic surgery has its place, just like any other kind of medicine, if it's done properly. But you don't want to have plastic surgery at the point where, uh, for her to be able to scratch her behind, she just has to reach to her forehead and do a little scratch. The woman, <laughs> Good one. You know, honestly, she she's so brainless. I, 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 I was, I was thinking along the lines of, of saying something yeah. about uh, Hillary. Right, but right. I, go ahead. That was good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, honestly, we got a situation here where Nancy Pelosi says these Pelosiisms, where you got to pass the Affordable Care Act in order to find out what's in it. It's like Nancy. <laughs> Nancy, what, uh, what were you? Uh, no what, what, rational uh, nation would elect people like what, her. No, she, you know what she said to the people in the crowd to hear her down on the border there? She said, we're all Americans. I'm thinking, ah, uh, that uh, sounds you. like something. That sounds like something like uh, like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. We all like chocolate, uh, either chocolate uh, lovers and chocolate liars. I'm, by know. the way, I, I'm car- <laughs> on, on my news, uh, the first uh, update this morning that I did, uh, this came out late yesterday, both Paul Gregg, Paul Craig Roberts, the uh, former assistant U.S. Secretary of the Treasury and editor at Wall Street Journal, and Gerald Clemente, both very brilliant people, have said as of yesterday that the entire U.S. gold hoard is now gone. And the gold that we have been keeping for other con- countries like Germany, it's gone, too. I, I, I don't believe that for a second. I'll tell you why. Uh, between the British Columbia gold mines, which I know about, which are north of Williams Lake, and the Alaskan gold mine, which is the largest in human history, we got so damn much gold, it's sickening. And uh, when China sequesters 8,000 tons, we got doodles more. But it's probably not where we think it is. Welcome back, and we have Dr. Mike Hoffman back. <clears throat> Dr. Mike. When we go to your website, uh, americaplunder.com, that's americaplunder.com, Dr. Mike Hoffman, you're on the first hour. Uh, you have a book called, Amer- called America Plundered, and it, you talk about another book you've written with another co-author called Islam, Radical, uh, at Islam. The door, Radical Islam at the door, scratch tote, and quote, in the house. And we have that with Obama. He supports radical Sunni Islam, <clears throat> even if it violates previous uh, arrangements that we have, like with Maliki. He's locked up with with Saudi Arabia and extreme elements in Israel. And by the way, Saudi Arabia and Israel work together, even though they're disparate religious, their geopolitical goals are very similar. And uh, radical Islam, actually, even though it's pretty radical, has similar goals as the globalists, at least temporarily, until they finally they're thrown aside, just like a, a prostitute thrown from the from the uh, the uh, the uh, bling car at eighty miles an hour once they finish with her. That's what Islam is going to be used uh, as and thrown aside, just like America. 
what I see yeah. happening is they're crashing the country. They're they're planning on literally emigrating into the country. Huge numbers of people from the Middle East and other places, especially as the world climate and starvation spread and plague spread. We see that with the disaster in the Middle East and in, in, in Central America, like when they talk about El Salvador and these other places like Guatemala where you have AK-47s at the McDonald's. We could easily clean up that situation. We don't need to tolerate it in their country if they're nearby. We also need to know that these disasters also lead countries like Russia who wants to replace short-range nuclear missiles in places like Nicaragua, Guatemala, El Salvador, etc., aimed right at our backyard at our southern borders. And people say, well, that can't happen. We can't have another Cuba, you know, Bay of Pigs. Hogwash. In fact, yeah. uh, don't think of Mr. Putin because he's so-called Eastern Orthodox Christian. He's a nice guy. He's going to do what it needs to do to reassert the Soviet Union, which is what he's doing. But we're not moving from a position of strength to restrain him. We're not moving to prevent the death of people in Slavyansk and Donetsk by supporting the maniacs in Kiev. No, no, we're actually aggravating Putin so that instead of negotiating with him so he can kind of control the beast and make sure he doesn't become ultra-radicalized, we're making things worse. So we're the worst of all possible worlds is what we're doing. Yes, we are, and that is true with Islam as well. If you go back and look at uh, Bush after the war that we had in Iraq and so forth, he was trying to tell us that all all Muslims are peace-loving and so forth, and it's a religion oh, of peace. That's garbage. It's, it's really garbage, and you have to understand it from that perspective. Now, I'm not saying that every Muslim out there has got a, a sword in his teeth and ready to no, kill No, but you. the fact is, they don't speak out against it, just like there's Christians don't speak out against bad things and wrong things in Christianity, they're responsible for it. Just like if a doctor knows something yeah. wrong in his hospital or operating room or emergency department or against the toxic drugs, if you don't speak out against it, you're part of the problem. You're contributing to the death and destruction and the misinformation that's spreading lies and the chaos that's going to cause more, more melee, more disaster. Yes. So I tell people, when you don't speak out, you're part of the problem. Well, in fact, it goes beyond <clears> that. You have to understand that in my book, uh, Radical Islam, what we really show very clearly, and it's been very highly acclaimed by a lot of different people, for helping to educate you very quickly. It's, a, it's only 85 pages long, and we did it deliberately to try to give you an overview of what is going on in Islam that, you can't get elsewhere without without just sending you right into a state of, of catatonic um, uh, sleep or whatever the case might be. And the key is that what is going on there is that the Islamists, even the moderate Islamists, if they are obedient to the Koran, there's going to be a time when their Mahdi returns, which is kind of similar to what our return of Christ would be, right. that will basically say, all right, now is the time when the Mahdi declares war against every other religion, right. that you have to kill your neighbors and so forth if you have well, to live it, in the United States. It basically says if all Christians don't turn to Islam, then they're the enemy need yes. to be beheaded. They need to be and, beheaded and, and, or at least killed. And it also says that Jesus Christ is a Muslim when he returns, and as right. a Muslim will force Christians to, to, to convert, and if they don't, then under the orders of Jesus Christ, this is the craziness of Islam, and the so-called uh, Mohammedan craziness of the, what's, what's put in the Quran, that under Jesus Christ, the orders will be given to behead those who will not convert to Islam. Yes. That's a fact. That's a fact. And they will accuse the real Christ, assuming that that's when he returns, right. of being a, f a false prophet. And right. so you can see here, if they have as much... Uh, control of the press as they do now, and, and probably even more at that time, they their message will be getting out that the real Christ will be the right. false prophet. And you know what's going to happen for the tip of Christians well, and then, or the non-Christians and yeah, so forth. And then, They'll believe yeah. it. Right. Now, you put, had to put that in the context of surging oil price because of Middle Eastern and Ukrainian war. Uh, right now, I just got a report here from Mike Hoffman. who talks about, this is from set by Ann Morrison. Mike Hoffman on RFD Farm Radio said Saturday there is no jet stream of the southern United States. That further, the weather will not be moving from west to east, but will remain in place until a large low, such as a monsoon, moves the weather pattern east. And now, by the way, there's a blocking high in the North Pacific, so we have no rain here because the rain's been blocked by blocking highs because it's geoengineering the weather, specifically because they don't want highly radioactive water carrying cesium and strontium from Japan to 
start dumping on the United States, even if it causes a dry spell that kills a lot of people and causes a massive crisis and fires. They don't yep. care. Right. Now, in the United States, let's just continue with this a moment. What has right. happened under the Obama administration is he's opened the doors to our federal agencies wide open to Muslim extremists, Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood people, to come in and create policy for you and I. This is really a dangerous situation. So give us examples, people. because he also has direct family. They're involved in extreme yes. Islam in Africa, and his family, he's actually set up foundations to try to make sure there's monies that go to these organizations that ultimately try to kill Christians, set up Sharia law in Kenya, which is primarily one of the largest Christian countries in Africa. Uh, it's really quite bizarre. And really, you know, I, I, I think ultimately the globalists are using the yeah. uh, the Muslim extremists just as they're using the uh, the Nazis in uh, Western Ukraine. Oh yeah, I think you're right. Uh, there. I think that's the, 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 this is part of a chessboard, and uh, I mean, you know, look, the ISIS terrorists, these these nut jobs, are funded by not only Saudi Arabia and Qatar, yeah. but funded by us and by largely us. run. Out right. of the American embassy in Turkey. That's right. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable what's going on right now. It's well, they're using them to, to 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 get us to get us into what will eventually be not only a, a general Middle Eastern war but a, a, a World War Three because the globalists are determined to get their new world order, and to do that they want to kill a lot of people and they want uh, the to to restructure the, the global society just as they did with the First yes. World War and the Second World War yes. and before that even the Napoleonic Wars. Right. And it, this is a game that's been played before. The trouble is, we now have weapons of mass destruction. That uh, if we if things get out of hand, we may all die. No, I absolutely correct. And that is, I'm not sure if they're going to create a World War Three or if they're going to starve us to death well, I, from here's a what collapsed I think. economy. I, I think they want the collapsed economy. They want the danger of war to allow us to make a treaty yes. that's going to bring yes. together, because it says uh, before these things shall happen, and this is in the book by Mark Biltz talking about blood moons, it says that I will send you a strong delusion that those that do love not the lie, that the truth shall receive a lie. The great delusion is the real big sign, if you want to call it, that tells people to look up in heaven to see the blood moons. <laughs> and that lie is ecumenism that's going to bring Chrislam, Christi Christianity and Islam together. We, we talked about that with uh, our, our, some of our other religious experts we've had on the program. <clears throat> and then uh, that, that combined with what the Pope's doing, what the United Nations is doing, <clears throat> with crashing the economy and set up a cashless system, all of these factors are converging in the near future to cow America to a global government. Crushing. Crushing our government, crushing our dollar. Opening our borders together as to what we need to do. Let's do it as an action plan now. <clears throat> okay. Welcome back, Dr. Mike Kaufman and Tim Alexander. Let's talk about an action plan. I know we can pontificate about all these things, but we've got one segment left. What can we tell our audience here listening worldwide? Because we're, our program is broadcast across Europe, China, Russia, North Africa, and Middle East. It's broadcast across North and South America on the KBN satellite. It's broadband. It's on phone lines. There's no reason why people can't hear the truth now. And it's literally the truth is raining down from heaven because we're inspired. We're all believers telling the truth against an onslaught of evil. And if you don't include the demonic element in this, the geopolitics doesn't make sense. It, billionaires are on our side because rich and powerful people want their Airstream jets in the private islands and their castles. They don't want mega death. They don't. They, they if they're just plain greedy, they want to have their corporations expand. They want more business and customers. They don't want to see environmental pollution where they're forced to go into an underground hotel, even if they had a ticket like a Willy Wonka ticket to go with a golden ticket to go underground. They don't want that. They realize that the people with the levers of power are not just psychotic. They're evil, and we they have really a real, we have a real problem with naming things as evil. We don't like that DSM TR modified diagnosis of TR5, that these people are just malevolently evil. They're not psychotic. Yeah, there's more of a, a stigma to saying the word evil than uh, conspiracy theory, you know? Exactly. Now, yes. so let's, let's summarize the, 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 the talking points for what do we do now? 
Well, what do we one, do as individuals, one, what do we do as people to try to stop this behemoth, this monstrosity? And again, some of it is disconnecting. I tell people, get at your church and get 100 families or more together. Start getting a piece of land and putting in a well. Get your turtle tough shelters. Get yourself ready for disconnecting step by step with bartering and so on. Get your skill set with communication and emergency care and food supplies. Start to disconnect so we have places of refuge when society goes kaflu. Right. Because and I agree with that. But before you get to that point, Bill, I think the first place you need to go to is on your knees and start praying right. about this. Absolutely. My wife and I pray every night at 9 o'clock. There's uh, probably close to 10,000 or 100,000 people that are praying every night at 1 o'clock for this nation and for a great revival. Because ultimately, I really do think that the only thing that's going to penetrate the darkness that surrounds almost every person in this country now is is uh, the truth of Christ. It's just, it's, there's no yeah. other way that they, you know how the it, truth can yeah, penetrate. Let me tell people how they should start Amen. praying. Okay? Prayer, it says, praise opens the gates for God's blessing. Yes. The first thing you do is you give God all of the cursings you've done against other people, all of the sadness and yep. things they've done to you, all of the things where you feel hard done by, all of the illnesses you've had, all the negativity that's happened in your life, randomly or non-randomly, and then you start giving the good things that God has given you. And at the end of that, you're not just crying, you're smiling and you're realizing, hey, God's with me. You have a confirmation in your spirit that God's going to give us a way. He's going to give us pathways. He's going to give us other people that are going to be touched by God. He's going to start dealing with people like Obama and the globalist bankers because we want to pray for them. When you start praying and giving the bad things and the good things in your life, your personal life, you no longer feel superior to Obama or anybody else. You no. realize all of us are saved by grace. And when you start praying for people like Obama and George Soros, etc., you bring a, a hot iron, a branding iron on them. And basically, you allow them to have grace or to reject grace. But it's not your fault anymore, and it's not your responsibility, and you can't share or feel like you're cursing them. You're simply praying for restoration to them, and God will give them grace. And when God's finished, he will, do the, he will finish off the business. He will bring it to closure. And that's when you start praying, God's going to give us a, a harvest, a harvest of people who are going to say, I know the truth now because they listen to this program. I bought these books, America Plundered, and 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 your other books that are present there. You know that, that talk about you know Islam, uh, you know scratched out in the you know at the door in the house, or where they mm -hmm. go on uh, Tim Alexander's blog and they read it daily and say, my gosh, you know if you don't have a Christian perspective, no matter where your religious things come from in the first place, you're never going to understand this because it does defies logic because it's evil. Yeah. It's evil. It's evil. People are just greedy. Think it's nuts. If they're just plain, you know, secular, and you know, smart there's something people. else to, to keep in mind is Satan is, as I think, Bill, you've called him uh, lo uh, 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 the ultimate Lucifer. Losing. I call him, I call him Lucifer. How's that? Yeah, Lucifer. Yeah. That's it. Uh, uh, Lucifer. God is omnipotent. God is all powerful. Yeah. God right. is all loving and all good and, and all knowing. Uh, Satan isn't. That's if right. you're on God's side, you're on the winning side. Remember, eternity is a very long time. Long time. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Kim. Right. That is very good advice. And, and I really think that's where we need to first start. Now, I think the idea of preparation is good. We need to do that. And if you feel that of the Lord to get together with other people and so forth to buy property where you can grow crops and all the rest, by all means do it because that's going to be absolutely needed uh, when this thing really hits. And yeah, the other... Uh, you want people to be bought into it, though. You, I tell people, don't try to buy it yourself, mom and pop. Financially, it'll break you, but what you need is a large enough number of people with right. overlapping skill sets. You can start to build what I call spiritually community, which is you know tethered to God. And then secondly, they have the skill sets to protect each other when things get crazy. Because yes. it's going to get crazy. I mean, it's something as simple as... We, I think, give you three or four scenarios. We attack Iran. Iran hits with with an EMP weapon and knocks out our power grid. Just not our power grid. Our cars still work. Maybe even a lot of our communications work. Maybe even some of our cell phones work. But the power grid is gone, or the and the satellites are gone. So you can't do internet communications, and your and your ability to do satellite internet and everything is gone kaflui. So a lot of the stores can't do transactions because they go through a satellite link. And that's simply that one thing. 
is going to make it difficult to go to the gas station to get gas, to buy groceries, mm-hmm. to have a normal commerce, and it could take them months to get the redundancy up to, to, to correct that. So that's just one scenario. Next scenario, let's say we have an environmental catastrophe where the ozone layer just decides to go flip for a little while because there's a big burp of radiation from Fukushima or there's a war in the Middle East and there's some radiation released. All of a sudden, the ozone layer goes poop, and then now you've got no uh, crops of grain crops, no corn, no wheat, no nothing like that. All of a sudden, people have to slaughter all their animals because there's no food, and the price of bread goes from you know three or four dollars a loaf to twenty or dollars a loaf. And a lot of third world countries can't buy bread at all; they're starving to death. <clears throat> In other words, we get a hiccup, they get a cardiac arrest. That's right. You know what you're describing, don't you? I'm describing it's exactly the plagues and so <clears throat> forth of, the, of Revelation. Right, and, and what I see coming, and I don't have a time scale. God says, you know, no man knows the day or the hour. What he's trying to say is keep watchful of the times, keep watchful yeah. of the blood moons. And this book, by the way, that uh, Mark Biltz has written, when you look at all the different days and times, like the 17th day of Shezvan, which is the day when Noah came out of the of the ark, when you actually look at these different days, you know, when he actually spotted the, the, the dove, these things are the, the very day that Jesus was resurrected, the 17th day of Heshvan. Yeah. When you start to check these different dates and seasons and appointed times, it's amazing. Even the, the day was called Yom Teruah, which is the, the Feast of the Long Blowing or the Feast of Trumpets, was the very day that, no, that Adam was born. And if you actually go back in the schedules and look at the times, of course, with John the Baptist and with his cousin who was born, what you find actually is that, that Jesus was probably born... Uh, because of the six months issue, he was probably born in the fall, and he was born on the Feast of Tabernacles, because he tabernacled mm-hmm. this, mm-hmm. Right, which is really interesting. And if you actually study the schedules, which I was given back years ago, back in 1988, it's in the book Clay and Iron, which I'm going to be bringing updated versions, uh, a little booklets of it, which are going to expand it. Uh, the schedule shows that the very first day of the last seven years starts on Sakat after what's called a Shemitah year, which means the Shemitah year is coming up, 2015. <clears throat> so the Feast of Sikat, right after the Shemitah, means that we're potentially, and I'm not saying this is a date, but we're potentially in a very danger zone where a combination of world economy, food supplies, etc., and war are going to converge to cause a lot of problems. Yeah. And if you're not physically ready with, you know, gold coin and food supplies and helping your neighbor and connecting in your church and getting ready... You're going to be in a state of shock. And you know, we're not talking about even uh, weeks and months. We're talking about days where people don't have food or water. Where yeah. the devastation in the first six months, its first six weeks, can just be unbelievable. You're absolutely correct. And the church itself is going to have a tremendous opportunity for evangelism during that period of time. Probably yeah, they got to be prepared now, price. physically as well as spiritually. Right. So again, americaplunder.com. Of course, your website, uh, Tim, is... Europe business with one s dot blogspot dot com and of course we always appreciate your support in getting all your nutraceutical and wellness needs at nutramedical dot com it gets us on the air it allows us to help other people it allows me to provide new technologies and the word it is a feed my sheep is what God said we feed you physically we feed you nutritionally we feed you spiritually so you have a full belly and can move forward in faith but give your good things Give your bad things, give all your grief to the Most High God, and in that praise, He will give you a way. He will break the walls. He will give us a pathway, collectively, to rebuke evil. 